Welcome to church this morning. We're so glad that you're here. Let's stand up to our feet. Come on, church. Let's put our hands together. Let's lift up the name of Jesus in this place. Come on. such a great service planned for you, but I wanted to take a break here. We have some baby dedications coming up, and I have a message that I'm excited to share with you, but I wanted to take just a pause for us to celebrate, really give you something to worship about here for the next uh, few moments. We, in case you're unaware, 
Uh, we have been in a several year process building up to a moment to receive a miracle offering here as one of those steps here uh, the last few weeks building up to our transition to our new facility. So if you had a little challenges with parking this morning, we're trying to make room and make space for you. Just north of here, we bought 54 and a half acres and uh, we've been in a process, yeah. And so, by the way, we have Mayor Mark Matthews here with us today. Raise your hand there, Mayor. Would you give him a round of applause? Thank you for your leadership, Mayor. Uh, me and several pastors pray with him. We have great godly leadership here in the city and we're thankful for that. But uh, last weekend, we needed a million dollars to get this done, all right? We already had received about 5.8 million over the last few years. So you guys have been giving generously. But we had a million dollar need to be able to start construction. And so last weekend's offering was this amount of money right here. Look at this. Come on now, give God a round of applause. Come on. Just in one weekend. But some of you brought checks by the church. Some of you mailed us some checks. I know you young people don't know what that is. It's a piece of paper that you write on and it, it counts as money. But then others gave online. We love online giving, by the way, here. It just is awesome. It's efficient. Don't have to shred the paper. After all of that, we had this much money by the end of the week. Come on now. Come on. Then we checked the giving boxes. You know those wood things back there? We hadn't checked them in like six months. There was all this money in there. We got like $160,000 out of the gift boxes and we ended up at this right here. Come on now. Let's pray together, but I want to say as your pastor, it is an honor to be your pastor. Uh, you, you guys just get it. You're generous, you love people, you want to reach people for the kingdom of God. And I know this, God's going to meet you there at your point of giving and generosity. We don't give to get, but when we cooperate with God, he meets us there. Father, we thank you for your goodness to us, for your generosity towards us. I pray, Lord, your blessing over each and every person. May we, even as a church, look at this milestone moment. May it be a marker in our lives to recognize how good you really are and how you desire to impact the lives of people. Lord, we worship you today in Jesus' name. Amen. You deserve the glory and the honor. Oh, I lift my hands in worship and I bless your holy name. You deserve the glory in the honor oh i lift my hands in worship and i bless your holy name cause here i agree you do me because so great there is no one else like you there is no one else like you cause here i agree you do me so great there is no one else like you there is no one else like you come on church let's sing this together you deserve the glory and the honor and the honor I lift my hands and and I bless your holy name. You deserve the glory yes, and the honor. Oh, I lift my hands in worship. I will bless your holy name. Cause you are great. You do me.
church.
us pray together. Father God, Lord, we thank you for your spirit, Lord, how you moved amongst this house and you moved us to a point of a miracle. God, you show it up, Lord, and we thank you for showing up and performing a miracle in our midst that stirs our faith, increases, Lord, just our, our, just our perception, our understanding of how much you love us and how near and how much you're with us. Right now, church, with the faith and the expectation in your heart for the miracle you've just seen in this house, I want you to to reach out in faith for the miracle in your own life, for what you're believing for in your own life. See, because God wants to do the same thing in your life that he's doing in this house. So God, right now, Lord, we believe that you are the God of the impossible. That God, with you, nothing is impossible. So right now, Lord, in this atmosphere of faith, God, we just express our gratitude to you for how you've shown up. And we also just invite you into other areas and capacities of our life where Man, we believe for you to move, for someone to come to know you, for a friend to be healed, for a relationship to be restored, for a child to be saved. God, we just extend the faith and the expectation of this atmosphere into those situations right now. And we just invite you to show up and be who you are, Jesus. Lord, we love you. We pray this in your name. Amen. All right, church, would you have a seat? As you're sitting down, I want to invite the families that are going to be dedicating children. Uh, make your way over to the side here. And then in a moment, I'll invite Pastor Jeff up to pray for you guys. I know we got a lot of friends and family uh, here to see friends dedicate. We had like 15 families last night. I think we got three this service and a bunch more next service. And so if you're a friend or family, thanks for coming. Uh, if you're a guest uh, just from the community coming to Milestone Church today, every week, and we have people coming in for the very first time, uh, we're so excited about that. That's why we're making these steps to create more space. And so if you are our guest today, we would love to give you a gift and also send you some information in the mail. Uh, so just provide us your name and your address, that information, uh, utilizing a little white card and the seat back right in front of you. Uh, just drop in the offer container later on in the service, and we'll get you that info uh, this week in the mail. All right, let me inter introduce these families to you here. Uh, first off, we got Matthew and Kimberly Cartwright. Come on down, guys. Dedicating Case and Wade. Case and Wade, right over here, guys. Jake and Whitney Early. Dedicating Benton Michael and Garrison Robert. We got a twofer. All right, David and Brandy Hampton. They're dedicating Madeline Grace. Excellent, guys. Pastor Jeff. Well, it's one of our most exciting things to do as a spiritual family is to be a part of a celebration moment with these families as they dedicate their children and children dedication is a pattern we see in the scriptures. We see that Hannah wanted to have a child. She said, God, if you'll give me a child, I'll dedicate him to your service. We see Jesus uh, going to the temple with his parents. And so uh, we believe here that these children, God's desire is that he's going to move on their hearts. And we're believing and praying with these parents that these children will make a personal decision to follow Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. But the atmosphere created by these parents and the atmosphere in a local church like this, Sunday school teachers, friends, and others, uh, we play a role in this. We're part of this. So that's the power of spiritual family. We also recognize their natural family. How many of you are part of the family of some of these up here? Any grandparents got any pictures out there that you... All right, let's give them a round of applause, these families as well. We celebrate with you guys. I'm going to ask some of our team to come up, and we're going to pray over uh, these children, and I'm going to ask you, if you would, just to stand to your feet. We're going to join together as a, as a church family and agree with the prayers of these families together for these children. Father, we thank you, Lord, that children are a gift from you. We recognize, and these families recognize, that they have a stewardship over these children's lives. They're, they're not... Uh, necessarily, they, they come from you and they're not necessarily uh, the owners, they're just the stewards of these lives uh, for a season. And we recognize that they've taken a powerful step today to say, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And so we join with them. Lord, we pray over each one of these children. We pray your protection upon them. We pray your protection over their health. We pray Lord, for all of the gifts and the plans you have for them, even before they were born, you put gifts on the inside of them. And Lord, we recognize 
that you want those promises and those gifts and the plans you have for them to come forth. And so, Lord, we pray against any strategy of the enemy, uh, anything. Lord, we pray that they would just continue to move in your direction. We pray for the day they would receive you as their personal Lord and Savior. We join with the families. We join as a church. And we recognize that, Lord, you have a plan and a promise for these children. And we agree with it today in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you give them another round of applause? Congratulations to all of you. At this time, turn around and shake someone's hand. Tell them you're glad to see them at Milestone today. Welcome you back to our fall series. Several weeks ago, we kicked off a series, and we've had this theme and this thesis, and that is the theme of grow. And here's the thought. We know in life, things grow and things progress, and we all want things in our life to grow. We want our bank account to grow. We want our uh, influence to grow. We want our careers to grow. We don't want our waistline to grow. There's things we want to grow, things we don't want to grow. But uh, growth is a way of life. And here's what we've been really unpacking, and that is, why is it in our spiritual lives we seem a little hung up? We seem a little confused. It seems like it's something very nebulous, and we don't quite know how to get our hands on it. And so I've been really thinking in this series through the lens of trying to make spiritual growth something practical for you you know pastor what do you actually do like how do you actually live this and so we've been trying to make it very practical each step along the way and today's message I think is very practical and it's where you live I want to talk about growing through seasons of transition growing through seasons of transition now I do again want to encourage you that you are growing one of our Core values here at Milestone is development, discipleship, developing people. Um, we set out this fall really with two objectives, two, two steps for you to take practically in the area of spiritual growth. One was because we don't want to just build a church where there's just a gathering of people only because that's incomplete, but we want you in relationships and we want you dialoguing and interacting and and, and really, because I believe that's where you grow, and so we set out for all of you to take a step toward being in a small group. And I'm excited to announce we have more people meeting in small groups than our average adult attendance on our weekend services. Now, now some of that's because football has started and the people are coming to church once a month, but anyway, come on. <laughs> but it's also a sign of your participation level, okay? Um, that is exciting to me because God's going to meet you there. I just announced this miracle offering. That's exciting. Let me tell you, some of you, though, out there are thinking, well, that's cool. Somebody, you know, some, some guy just, you know, wrote a big check or some lady wrote a big check or some family left a trust fund or a will or something like that. Um, and you might not really realize the power of when you have a church that recognizes, remember the word I've been using with you out of the book of Acts, an everyone church. That everyone's contribution matters, not just one guy on the platform, not just a few people. People say, you know, there's 20% of the people do 80% of the work. Not here. 
Not here. That's not the way we've built Milestone, and that's not who you are, and I'm so grateful to be your pastor. I want to show you some statistics on this offering. $1.54 million, but there were 1,175 gifts toward the offering. The average gift was $1,311. That's an everyone church. That's an everyone church. Remember what I told you? I said, I, I knew God would provide. I wanted all of you to participate. And you should, you should participate. Again, there's, this is not just one person with a, you know, a, a big check. Those we got, got it covered. Uh, we're journeying together. And all of us participating, we're growing in God. And God's doing significant things through your willingness to grow spiritually. So let's talk about growing in seasons of transition. I have some fun facts for you. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to 1 Kings chapter 19. We're going to start in verse 9, but I got some fun facts just thinking about seasons of transition, thinking about how life works. Life just changes, doesn't it? It does. I mean, for, for the most part, most of you don't like change. Psychologists tell us most of you do not really like it. Even some of you who act like you like it privately really have a real aversion to change. You like safety. You like security. You like to be preserved. You like a bubble-wrapped life. The only problem is the way God designed the universe is he designed it to change. In fact, our seasons are changing. Come on, men. At my house this week, the windows were opened. Pumpkin spice latte was, was given. You know, it's like we had some pumpkin uh, muffins. Come on, I feel, feel the Lord right here this morning. I could eat one right now. Um, so so our, our wives, sometimes they lead us into these fall. You know, ladies are coloring their hair different. You know, it's like we're Instagramming. We're ushering in fall. How does that happen practically? The earth seasons are not caused by the differences in the distance from the sun throughout the year. The seasons are the result of the tilt on the earth's axis. So God made the world, he made the universe, he tilted the earth so that there would be seasonal change. That's a biological uh, principle, in fact. We're also changing. I shared with you last week that, unless some of you realize it, you're getting older. Karate Kid is 53 years old. The Karate Kid. He is 53 years old. If that doesn't make you feel old, I don't know what will. And here's some real depressing statistics about what's happening to you as you get older. 50 to 100 hairs fall from your head every day. This is normal. Some are more follically challenged than others. <laughs> and, and they fell out all at once, you know. But anyway, your, your hair is falling out. Here's the next thing. This, this thing just gets depressed. Look at this. From the age of 40, human beings, they gradually begin to shrink in size. We're losing our hair and we're shrinking. Here's, here's what else is happening. Look at this. Most of the dust, this is gross, underneath your bed is actually from your own dead skin. One lady left service last night. She said, that's not true. I have a guest bedroom. No one slept in it in a year and it's full of dust. I said, well, that's your skin blowing into your guest bedroom. <laughs> Look at the next one here. You get a new stomach lining every three to four days. I could keep going on and on, but God made our world. He made us in a way that things change. That's one thing that we're guaranteed of, but in our own lives, seasons change. Transition comes. You may be in a transition right now. Many people moving to this city. You've moved here. Maybe you have a new job. And there's a lot of things you're trying to sort out as a result of moving here. You're trying to sort out new friends. You're trying to sort out a new church. You're trying to find out where you're going to buy groceries. You're in transition. Some of you may have lost a job. Some of you may have gotten a new job. Some of you may be parents. And again, maybe you prayed to have little kids. And there's some of you moms there. You prayed to have some kids. And now you're... Lifelong dream to be a mommy is filled with sippy cups and cereal and messes, and you're kind of wondering, is this all there is to life? All I do is go from one snack to meal to diaper change to, come on, moms, are you with me? And you're like, wow, this is, and so it's a transition. Maybe you used to work, now you're with kids, or maybe you do work and you have kids, but all of this newness has brought on a new level of anxiety and questions. See, seasons change. Maybe some of you have helped your kids transition to new grades. Did you, I don't know 
How many of y'all have already raised your kids? Just raise your hand. Y'all need to give some of us who are still raising. We need to just like skip seventh grade. <laughs> Come on, anybody. It's like girls especially. I mean, it's new and it's like they're coming. Freshman year. That every time they make that transition, who am I in this new context? And, and they don't always have all the emotional equipment and maturity yet to navigate all of that. And yet we see in them sometimes some of their responses. I don't know if you do that as a parent, but I look at their responses and I see some things in myself about transition, about newness, about identity. Some of you may be dealing with loss. You've lost a family member and it's a new season. You're going to face holidays without that family member, and so you're navigating all of this transition. How many of you are in a season of transition right now? You just raise your hand and say, Jeff, I'm in a new season. People everywhere in here. So what do we do about it? How do we navigate? How do we, really today I want to give you a couple of things. How to think about it, how to see it, and then at the end of the message, I'm going to tell you practically something you can do every single day when you're in a season of transition, but let's first go to the Word of God because I love the fact that we don't have a sanitized version of the Bible. It gives us these ordinary characters and it shows us their seasons of transition. The character we're looking at here in 1 Kings 19 is Elijah. <clears throat> Last week I speak to, spoke about his mentee, Elisha, but Elijah's life was marked with a bunch of ups and downs and transitions in his life. He goes and he confronts the king. Then he finds himself in a place of drought. There's drought and famine everywhere. God takes him over to the Kareth Ravine. He lives by this brook. God feeds him. God always provides for him in every season, feeds him. and He has water. Then the brook dries up. Look, I confront the king, but God's still providing for me. Then the brook dries up. You ever been in a place in life where everything's going good, God's satisfying your needs, and the brook dries up? Transition. Transition. Then God sends him over to this widow, and he has to walk through this process of this widow having a miracle and showing her God's provision, and everything's going good there. And then her son gets sick and dies, and then she blames it on him, and so he has a whole nother set of transitions. And then once again, he goes and has this confrontation moment with the king. One of Elijah's famous stories is where he confronts the prophets of Baal. You guys remember this story? Amazing. I mean, God makes him step out publicly and confront the prophets of Baal, and they have this moment where they, their, their God, who's not really a God, can't perform, and his God shows up and performs. Huge victory! Our God shows up with fire. Our God proves himself. Big low, because then he ends up on the run, and the queen's trying to kill him, and he ends up running, and he goes off into a place where he ends up under a broom bush. Get this, after such big victories and some challenges, he ends up in a place where he goes, God, just kill me. Just kill me. <laughs> I don't know if you've ever felt that in a season of transition. Would you just put me out of my misery? And he lives this life of up and down and up and down. Leads us up to this moment where he's been running for 40 days and he's hiding in a cave. Now listen how God begins to speak to him through all these seasons of transition. He brings him to something that's very powerful in navigating transition and he kind of changes up this guy who's seen God supernaturally move and find himself emotionally in a down place. He brings him to some sense of stability toward the end here. He's on the verge of his ultimate transition, which is when he's going to pass the mantle on to Elisha. He's going to return back and handle some things and pass that mantle. It says, And the word of the Lord came to him, What are you doing here, Elijah? Has God ever asked you that question? What are you doing here? We've got these things, these transit. What, why, why are you pouting? What, what's going on? Are we, where are we going? What's, what's happening here? What, why does God say that? Is it as if God doesn't know what he's doing there or doesn't know where we are? When he always, when he comes to us and goes, what's going on? Or you feel that engagement from him. It's not because God's confused. It's kind of like now when we navigate our way around town. My wife and I were headed to my son's football game. My dad, we had a big old brown station wagon, and my dad would pull that atlas out, you know, and he'd be searching the map. Come on, it'd stretch across the front. Now we got that app, little Google Maps, 
and we were, we were circling the same area. We were almost late for the game, and one of my favorite things to do on the little Google map deal is because I like to see what's all going on, some of my controlling issues, I guess, but I just, I, I get, you get down there, and you're driving around, and that lady's telling you, turn right, turn left. You know, the other day she told me, don't do that, dummy. No, she didn't, but anyway, <laughs> she'll talk to you, and you can push that button that says overview. I love to push overview because I want to see if it's telling me what's right. And you get that overview and you're like, oh, I see now. Oh, I, now I get it. When God asks you the question, what's going on here? What are you doing here? When you have that engagement, it's because he's trying to lift your perspective to show you things from his vantage point in your transition. That's what he's trying to do here with Elijah. He replied, I've been very zealous for the Lord God Almighty. The Israelites have rejected your covenant, torn down your altars, put your prophets to death with the sword, and I'm the only one left. Don't you just love how Elijah's just emotional? Oh, he just everything's bad, and I'm the only one, and they're trying to kill me too. The Lord said, go out and stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord. This is Mount Horeb where God gave the Ten Commandments. This is the same mountain that he passed by Moses. So he's showing him and anchoring him to his faithfulness historically. And look what it says here. The presence of the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Then a great and powerful wind tore the mountains apart and shattered the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. The Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, there was an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake came a fire but the Lord was not in the fire. And here's a word for some of you in a season of transition. And after the fire came, a gentle whisper. A gentle whisper. See, Elijah here shows us the pattern. I always love to take this through the cross. Elijah had a role and a responsibility to reveal God to the people of his generation. God selected him. He was one of the chosen ones that God would speak to in the Old Testament, prophets, priests, and kings. And so he had this interaction with God to show people what God was like. And God moved in power, and now he's showing him how he moves in the whisper. Jesus, though, comes and lives a life of challenges and transitions and goes to the cross, the ultimate transition, goes to the cross for you and I. So that as we see Elijah's life here, Jesus comes so that all of us can hear the whisper of God. All of us can walk with God through any season, any season, any transition, and anything in life. So let's break it down and let's get practical. Jeff, you said you're going to help me learn how to look at this and get a good picture of it. Let's, let's break down some practicals. Let's get some how-tos if you're in a season of transition. The first thing I would say, by the way, all of us are going to go through transitions. All of us are going to go through seasons. It's guaranteed. But not everybody grows in the transition. Not everybody comes out on the backside different. I want you to grow through your seasons of transition. Number one, the first thing you have to do is don't give in to fear and worry. The majority of people majority of all of us are dominated by fear and worry. In fact, if you look at your life and go, how many of my decisions in my financial life, how many of my decisions in my professional life, how many of my decisions in my parenting life are primarily controlled by the fear of the unknown? Are primarily controlled by what could happen, what might happen? By the way, most of the things we're afraid of never do happen. Most of the things we're afraid of right now will not matter to us in six months. If you're in a transition, the enemy's primary strategy is to get you afraid of what you don't know, to work on your expectations, to work on, and, and that's where we get a lot of times in transition. We want to hold back to the comfort of the past because we're looking out at these things we cannot necessarily predict and we don't know what's going. So we want to hold on. By the way, we have revisionist history too, don't we, when you're in a season of transition. Well, you know, I was parenting my kids and now I'm an empty nester. And so, you know what, I don't really have a purpose anymore. Now what am I going to And we look back on the child raising and we look back on all the glory days of it. We don't ever remember all those nights we had to stay up struggling through all that. Now it's kind of like... Well, you know what? This is kind of freeing. You know, this is awesome. New season, new opportunities, the new job, 
Well, you prayed for the new job. You prayed for it. Now you're afraid of what it's going to present, and you don't know exactly how to identify yourself in the new context. And sure, it's going to have some new challenges, but you know what? Your old job had challenges too. You were just familiar with these challenges. You were familiar with the brook. You were familiar with that time. As Every time God moved Elijah to a new season, he had to deal with that and he was showing him things along the way in his journey. I love what Jesus says about fear and worry. This is so powerful. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. This is crazy. I do this and you do this. We worry about tomorrow, then we get in our tomorrow with many of the blessings that we prayed for in that tomorrow, but we're so worried about the next tomorrow, we don't enjoy the tomorrow that we prayed for. And life, just go, you're losing hairs and you're shedding skin. <laughs> and it's just going by like this. Those kids will be raised before you know it. That retirement party will happen before you know it. And so you know what you need to do? Enjoy today. Enjoy today. Enjoy today. You have nothing to prove and no one to impress. Enjoy today. I always tell you stories about my life, not to highlight me, but I love to tell you so that you, this is just how it's applying in my life, and I want you to apply it in yours. That's the reason I tell you stories about my life. I've shared along the way, even in this building project journey. When we started several years ago, my wife and I praying about it, praying with our pastors, praying with our elders, um, I, I really, I, I sensed God was calling us in this direction, obviously, toward this transition, but I, I felt God saying, I want to do something different in you, in the way you go through the building campaign, in the way you go through it. And um, I, I just, again, I can, I, some people, when they hit new transition, some push and some are paralyzed. Let's just say I can become a pusher, and I'll just begin to push, and it can affect my sleep habits, it can affect my relationships, it can affect my family dynamic, because I can get consumed with it. And so I, I just, I had God speak to me and say, celebrate every step. Just celebrate today. Celebrate this step. Celebrate this moment. And I had a moment where a pastor that I respect, who's who's led a great church and transitioned it now, and he just kind of blesses and works with pastors. I went out on our property, and I got out of the car, and we walked out on that property, and he prayed for me, and he prayed and said, help Jeff live out this word that you spoke to him, to celebrate every step. Not every day have I done great, but I've done better. How many of you know God's not into perfection, but he is into progress? I've done better. I've done better. And you know what? You can too. And here's why. You can do better when you decide, you know what? Tomorrow has its own problems. I'm going to enjoy my wife today. I'm going to enjoy my husband today. I'm going to enjoy my kids today. I'm going to enjoy my church today. I'm going to enjoy maybe some ice cream this afternoon or something. I'm just going to enjoy today. I'm going to enjoy the new weather today. I'm going to enjoy today. And that helps you in seasons of transition. Number two, when you see what God's up to, it helps you in transition. It just helps you. It doesn't always make it easier, but God uses transition to perfect in us what we need in our next season. What we need in our next season. It's amazing in Elijah's life. God had to teach him how he could feed him with a raven and teach him about provision so that when he got to the widow at the next transition, he could help transfer and impart to her something God taught him by the brook. So at every season, Elijah was learning things about who God is and about his nature and how he works, and he was perfecting something in him at every season along the way. I had a friend of mine whose son hurt his knee. He's a high school football player, and they've waited forever to do the surgery. And I asked him the other day, I said, why are y'all waiting so long to do the surgery on his knee? And he said, well, the doctor said that for the, the best results, we need to... Well, wait till his growth plate finishes developing or something in there, it's the growth plate and the growing. And I, and I thought, that's a, that's a great picture of what God does with us in transition. 
It's, it's like, I, I need to get this growth plate. I need to get you to this place so the elasticity of the ligaments and the tendons of your life so that you can handle and expand and be able to handle that next season. God's always perfecting and doing something in you today that you're going to need to have tomorrow. I think about one of the most difficult transitions that I ever took. I've shared it here publicly over and over. It's in my book. It's worth it. The first, I've pastored four churches. This church, we started 13 years ago, but right after the first church that I pastored, due to taking a stand publicly, I found myself living with my in-laws. And uh, I've told the story before, but I want you to see it from this angle. I had all of my belongings. I went from Baylor graduate, senior pastor, to living with my in-laws. That'll do a lot for your self-esteem. My wife cried every single day. God was forging in me something. He was forging in me. Why are you in this? What are your motives? Is your desire to please me? Will you please me at any cost? Will you be a person who will stand for the right things? And I'll never forget in that season just the difficulty of it. Sometimes when you're in a difficult season and God's operating on you and he's waiting for your growth plate to grow, it's not fun. It's not fun. But I have in my Bible that I study with in my room by my table that I every morning study in, that Bible, that I, my study Bible, it has page after page of writing and things that God put in my life. Literally life messages that I preach today that God gave me in that six-month window. My son's named Caleb because of that six-month window. That season of transition, I did not even understand the depth of what God was putting in me to prepare me for the future. You may be in that moment right now. God's going to complete in you what he wants to complete. He has a plan for you. So if you'll just, it doesn't make it fun, and I'm not saying you have to just totally, you know, every day it'd be just like, this is awesome, but let God do his work. When you know God's doing his work, say, okay, Lord, I just want to get what you're trying to say. I want to get a breakthrough here. I want to be able to walk out what you've called me to walk out. Number three, transition trains us to listen to the whisper. God uses transition to help us learn how to listen to the whisper. Elijah got the revelation of the whisper at the end, right before he's about to hand off the mantle. I thought about Jesus on the Mount of Transfiguration. Elijah was there and he saw God whisper to Jesus, this is my son in whom I'm well pleased. When Jesus started his ministry, this is my son in whom I'm well pleased. Elijah learned about the whisper after multiple transitions. How was Jesus, beyond the fact that he was God, able to walk through the persecution, the pressure, all that he did? Why? He was living on the whisper. He wasn't living to prove. He wasn't living for the applause or the recognition. Jesus was living out of the pleasure that he felt in pleasing his father who whispered to him, you are my son and I'm pleased with you. Can I tell you, you can walk through almost anything if you hear God say that to you. If you hear God, his voice whisper to you. You need a word from God. By the way, that's one thing I believe about transition and why God takes us through it is it makes us more sensitive to the voice of God. And so you say, Pastor Jeff, you've walked through this season with our church. How have you? Well, well, I heard a whisper. Jeff, you're my son. I'm pleased with you. Just, just celebrate every step. God, that's not my personality. I just want to get to the next step. Forget the celebration. I want the next step. It's okay, Jeff. Celebrate every step. God wants to speak that way to you. And you know what that'll do? When it's like, ah, it'll anchor you. The whisper. Had a guy this week, met with him. He had texted me. He's a friend of mine. Um, I lead a small group too. He's in my small group. So I don't just tell you to. I lead one as well. And uh, he had texted me earlier and said, hey, can we get together? And uh, I said, man, sure. You know, I thought it was like get together, like have coffee, like chat, kind of get together. Y'all know that text fails you sometimes. And uh, he, he meant get together like I'm really struggling type get together. I'm like, we well, got to make this more clear, dude. I'm sorry it's been all these weeks and now we're getting together. I mean, put an emoticon on there, you know, with the eyes or something. I mean, give me some kind of end of, you know, ah! you know, let me know you really need me. I got a few things going, you know. I mean, I just, I'd love to have coffee, but just can't quite do it right now. But he was, he was, he was really struggling, and he was struggling with this. He has, he works for a company that he's worked for for years, very successful. Loved the one leading the company, 
The, the leader of the company was people-oriented, loved people, thought about people when they made leadership decisions. By the way, those of you that lead, always know your decisions have impact and effect on the lives of the people that you're leading. And so this, this one CEO was like that, and it's been transitioned to someone who doesn't have quite that perspective. It's really just all about productivity and this. And so, how many of you know we need to think about the numbers, but sometimes we got to remember the people are as important as the numbers. And so he's living in that, and, and the culture of an environment you're in has a huge impact on your overall well-being and how your satisfaction in life is. And so he's just toxic emotions and struggling about this. And he's like, I needed to get with you, you know, and just help you pray with me and talk about it. And here's what happened. I missed it, didn't know it was an emergency, but God used even me missing it. Because here's what God did. God took him to a passage in the Bible where the disciples are going to the other side, transition. And they're going to the other side, and it's stormy, and Jesus is asleep. You guys remember the story. And Jesus spoke to the disciples, why are you guys so timid? Why are you so afraid? And what I always want you to understand, the reason we want to engage you in the Bible, not just listen to me, is what happened was, from it just being the written word, it became the living word to this guy. This is how you navigate transition. Nothing much has changed at his company, but something has changed in him because he heard the whisper. And so he heard God say, don't be afraid. I got this. And the storm stilled, not necessarily at his company yet, but the storm stilled in his own heart. So you need to be able to hear the whisper. You need to be able to hear God say, here's what I'm doing, here's where I'm at. He wants to whisper to you. Now sometimes that's hard when you're used to hearing God in this way or that way to hear the whisper. Now, practical, before I pray for you. Very practical. I always want you to leave with something. You go, okay, pastor, that's all good. That's all inspiring. That's exciting. Can you hit the bullseye for me and tell me what to do? Well, I think I can with this verse right here. I think this verse hits the bullseye on what to do. If you're in transition right now, you've got teenager issues, you've got kid issues, you've got health issues, you've got job issues, you're transition, you just moved here, ah, what are we going to do? Do not be anxious about, do not be anxious about, do not be anxious about, anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, this is important, so you're bringing it to God, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And let me tell you what happens. Look at this. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus, Philippians 4. Say, okay, make it real. What do we do with this verse? Right here. Right here. Right here. Bring your request to God. Bring your request to God. Let him know how you feel. Elijah was honest with him. Bring your request to him. Bring, I'm, I'm, I'm insecure about this new season, God. I'm insecure about this situation, God. I'm worried about this situation, God. Help me not think about tomorrow. Help me enjoy today. Bring your request to him. But remember, with thanksgiving, I bring my teenager to you, God. I'm thankful I have a teenager. I'm thankful for the other day that my teenager had this behavior or that behavior. I don't see all of the negative behavior, but I see the good behavior. I thank you today for these little kids with these sippy cups and cereal everywhere. And I didn't really think this is what my life, but I thank you. I thank you for the smile. I thank you for the hug. I thank you. The thankfulness will change your soul. And then comes peace. And then comes peace. I bring my request, I thank you for what you've already done, and then peace begins to flood your soul, which is the number one thing we need in transition, is the peace of God. You don't need a new job, God may have a new job for you, but that'll have some new transition. You don't need a new circumstance, a new situation, what you need is, you need peace in the situation, and God wants to give it to you. I want you to bow your heads with me. As you bow your heads right now, some of you here, you say, well, that sounds great, Jeff, when you talk about what Jesus did. Let me just remind you, Jesus, he came so that you can have peace with God. 
You, you can't, this is, when you hear me say that, don't, don't think, you know, well, you can just work those tactics, you know, and bring your requests and thanksgiving. No, no, the, the peace of God also is a person and his name is Jesus. And if you really are looking for peace, you need a relationship with Jesus. You need peace living on the inside of you. You need a personal relationship with the Prince of Peace. His name is Jesus. Because there's turmoil in your soul, Jesus went through the turmoil of the cross. He went to the cross, he died on the cross and took your sin. And your sin's what robs you of your peace. Your sin's what's creating the anxiety on the inside of you. Your sin is what separates you from God. But Jesus endured the cross. He went through the pain of that to take all the stuff that robs you of your peace. And then he rose from the dead. He rose from the dead. And if you will put your faith in him and receive him, he will come to live on the inside of you. And he will walk with you. He'll be a savior, a friend that sticks closer than a brother. He'll walk with you through the journey of life. If you don't know Jesus, I'm going to ask you just to simply say, Jesus. You say, Jeff, what do I do if I want that Jesus? Just say, Jesus, come into my heart. I, I really, I surrender myself in a real way to you, Jesus. As best as I know how, I know I have missed the mark. I have made mistakes. But I surrender myself to you right now. And I believe you died on the cross for my sin. I believe you rose from the dead. You pray it. Just make it your words. Not my preacher words. You make it your words. And the Bible says if you will say that, you will mean that. The Bible says you will be saved. Jesus comes to live on the inside of you. His Holy Spirit will fill you and seal you and stamp you. Receive him into your heart. If every head bowed, how many of you here would say, Jeff, I prayed that prayer with you and I meant it. I really did. I received Jesus. I, I, I was away from God, but I prayed it with you. Would you just slip your hand up? I'm not going to embarrass you or make you come forward. Anyone here that would say that? I'm not going to make you stand up. Anyone here? Anyone else? Thank you. Just raise your hand if that's you. Okay. If you raise your hand, if you prayed that prayer with me, there's going to be a ministry team at the end of the service. They want to talk with you. They want to encourage you on your new journey with God. Because now you're born again, you're a baby in Christ, but you need someone to help you now journey and walk out this life you have with God. And our team's ready to do that. Uh, if you'll come forward at the end of the service or let us know somehow, we'll help you. But for all of you that lifted your hand and said, I'm in transition, Pastor. I'm in a season of transition. God, I pray right now you would just calm the storm in their heart. Calm the anxiety, calm the fear. Lord, I pray for a supernatural level of trust. I pray against fear and worry, and I pray that these, these principles would be more than principles, but they would be principles from your word that lead us to who you are as a person, Jesus. They would lead us to you, that we can walk through any season, any storm, any transition, if we have you, in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to ask our ushers to come forward. We're going to receive our tithes and offerings at this time. Thank you for your generosity. Again, give us that communication card if you prayed to receive Christ. The back of that communication card has a place for you to indicate to us a prayer request. It has a place that you can check. Uh, if you have questions about any kind of ministry area here at Milestone, we'd love to help you. And so you give us that communication card as well. Father, thank you for your goodness and generosity towards us. I pray your blessing over every family, every single person. I pray your blessing over business owners. We thank you for your grace in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Slide. 
church vessels God can work greatly through ministry team come on down to the front here as pastor Jeff said if you prayed with him come down here and tell us about it. if you prayed to receive Jesus today if you're praying about a transition you're going through and you want to come down and talk to somebody this team is here uh, ready to pray for you today um, as you're going out remind you a couple of things discovery 101s this afternoon at 12 30 for those of you new to milestone learning more and also ladies you're going to pack the house again this Wednesday for flourish I see you back here for that have a great afternoon we'll see you back next week <laughs>